Hey guys, what's up? Hope you're doing well. We've now had a couple of chances to look at the graph of the density of fresh water. And some of you guys made some really good progress on it. Um, some of you guys aren't maybe where you want to be, but you've got some like good ideas going on. And it's just a matter of refining your mental model of what's happening with these particles. And sometimes, you know, you'll have a mental model and then reality challenges it. So that may be what's happening here. So you guys had the job of looking at this graph that I've kind of recreated um, in a little bit of a simplified form, uh, but the basic shape of it overall is the same. And for some of you, the struggle is really about how do you read a graph? So, you know, like, how do you, like what am I looking at? What's the x-axis? What the, what's the y-axis? Um, so that's kind of the first thing. And really, the way we're going to look at this is we're going to say, okay, so this graph is going to tell us a story about how things change. And the story kind of progresses through a bunch of temperatures because down here on our x-axis we've got here we've got this kind of like increasing temperature as we go from left to right so the story is going to cover what happens to fresh water from a temperature of zero degrees celsius which we know is its melt freeze point up to 12 degrees celsius so not super warm it's kind of from freezing up through like yeah you know kind of warm water and so what we're going to do is we're going to imagine that we're going to take the water through that changing range of temperatures and we're going to see how the water acts at those different temperatures. So the x-axis is what's changing and then the y-axis is how the water responds to that change of temperature. And so what we really want to do is we want to have like a mental picture of how the particles are. All right. So if we're looking at density, we know we're talking about how much stuff is in how much space. And we've, at this point, you guys are doing a great job uh, recognizing that stuff is made out of these little particles. So in this case, we're looking at water molecules and how they're set up, how they're behaving, how close they are to their neighbors, how fast they're moving, all that stuff you guys have been working on all semester. So if we're looking at a particular point on our curve, what we want to think about is, like, let's say, let me just change this color. Um, our graph is telling us a story. So if we decide to pick, say, a temperature of one degree Celsius right here, then we come up to where that point is on the graph and we say, okay, well, let's find out what the story is at that point, right? So we know at that point, you know, we've got these numbers over here where we've got the lowest density on our frame is like 0.9995 grams per milliliters. And the maximum on our graph is one gram per milliliter. So water can change its density depending on its temperature. So that's what this graph is telling us. And so that means water molecules can change how close they are to their neighbor water molecules depending on the temperature. So what this is telling us is, okay, so at, at a temperature of one degree Celsius, we're right up here on our density curve. If we come over to like four degrees Celsius, so we've warmed the water up, we're now at about here on our curve. So when we look at that, and we think about how the story has changed, we're following this part of the graph. And we know that we're kind of coming along this way because we're increasing the temperature. But the other thing we're interested in is how much did the graph go up? So it's the whole kind of rise over run thing we've been working on. So what we're seeing here is as the temperature goes from one degree Celsius to four degrees Celsius, the density is increasing. So if density is how much stuff is in how much space, and that number is getting bigger, then that must mean that these molecules are more crowded. So if I'm going to, you know, kind of conceptualize this, then I want to have like a picture in my head or an actual picture of how these particles are arranged. So I'm going to have, like we've been doing in class, kind of these little storyboards of how things change. So let's take three different points. Uh, let me change this. Do, 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 do. And then let's take a point like out here at 10 degrees Celsius, right? So we're going to kind of picture what's happening in the water. We're gonna take a little sample of the water. We're gonna zoom ourselves down until we can see the, the water molecules up close. And we're gonna try and figure out how close are they to their neighbors. So if we're gonna represent our water molecules, we can just represent them as dots. We know they're not just simple dots. But let's take um, an example here. And we'll just say, okay, I'm gonna represent, you know, here's my water molecules hanging out in this sample. Uh, and I'm just drawing kind of a random number of them. So what I wanna do is I wanna say, okay, as I go from this box, to this box, I'm trying to figure out how are the water molecules changing. Well, I'm seeing here that, okay, it's getting hotter, the temperature's going up, and the density's increasing. So that means that what's happening to my particles is that they must be getting closer together. So in my picture, I should be showing, okay, so now these guys are getting 
kind of snuggly with their neighbors here. So that's my mental picture there. They're just more crowded. They're pulling in towards their neighbors for whatever reason. You may not know why. And then we're going to come down here, and we're going to see what changes in our third frame. So I'll just change this picture again. Um, so what we're going to look at is how do we change as we go along this part of the curve. So as we see that, now we're going to go, OK, like we've got this. Here's our rise over run thing. So our temperature has gone from 4 degrees all the way up to 10 degrees. So a bigger temperature jump added some form of energy to these molecules. And now we're looking at how their behavior has changed as we've provided that energy to them. So what we're seeing on our curve is that our density is dropping as we get to that point. So that means if we're going to draw our little picture of what the particles look like, all right, so as I go from here down to here, my particles should be getting more spread apart, which you guys were doing a really great job on, you know, kind of saying like, all right, um, now if the density is dropping, that means they're more spread out. So maybe my picture is, you know, I'm going to exaggerate a little bit, but maybe it's something like that. Because we started out with this picture, kind of like medium crowded, and then we went to this one. Oh, God, what happened there? Ugh, something terrible just happened with this thing. I don't know what it's doing. Oh, my God. What happened? I don't like that. That's mysterious. Okay, I guess I just lost my picture. Hold on. Okay, that was a strange interlude. All right, so I started out with kind of medium crowded over here, and then my curve says the density went up, so that means my particles got more crowded, and then my graph says then the density fell, so then my particles got less crowded, and they spread out. So that's what the graph is telling me. So the graph is telling its own story about this is how it works in the world. This is what happens. And then the second thing that you guys had to do after you figured out, okay, what story is the graph telling me, was you had to compare that to what you expected to happen based on what we've done so far in the course about how particles behave. And a lot of you guys rightly pointed out this graph doesn't really make any sense based on what you've seen so far about how particles behave. This part of the graph, most of you guys were pretty comfortable with. Because we're expecting that as you add energy, as you increase the temperature and things start to speed up, the molecules have higher kinetic energy, they're moving a lot faster, and they can get farther away from each other. So we've seen that over and over again in the simulations and things like that. So if the particles have higher energy and they can get farther apart from each other, we expect them to spread out. We expect them to take up more space. Same amount of particles, same mass of particles spread over a bigger space means a lower density. So that part, the dropping part of the curve, makes complete sense. But the part that doesn't really make a lot of sense is like from here to here. Because there we're going from zero degrees Celsius, so we're basically taking this from ice, and now we're going to warm the ice up. So we're going to melt it, and then we're going to see what happens. Now normally, based on what you guys understand, in a solid, particles are pretty close together. They're just kind of vibrating in place next to their neighbors. Um, and then as you warm them and you give more energy to those particles, the particles get to the point where they're freed from their bonds to each other, and now they can cruise past each other. So normally what you see is the particles start to spread out as they get that freedom. So we, we would expect this graph, so if I were to you know, kind of change this to like a totally different color, um, a lot of you guys actually pointed out that what you would expect was something more like this which was really cool that you could kind of think in terms of like, what would the graph look like if it did what I expected it to do? And that's more consistent with what we would expect that, you know, when we look at um, how dense the particles are in a solid, we expect particles in a solid to be really close packed and really dense. And as, they, as you warm them and take them into a liquid phase and then a gas phase, they continually get more energetic, they move faster, they get farther away from their neighbors, and the density should just keep dropping and dropping and dropping. So we have to come up with some, ne not necessarily a way to explain what's happening because you might not know what's happening, but what you have to do is you have to not fight the graph. You have to look at the data that's in front of you and not say, that's not what it's supposed to be, so I'm going to ignore it, or I'm going to find a way to explain it away. Because you might not have an explanation for this part of the graph right now, but you need to know what it says the particles are doing. So what it says the particles are doing is that instead of doing what we expect, and getting farther and farther away from their neighbors as they get hotter and hotter and move faster and faster, for a while on this graph, they actually get closer together. So as water goes from a solid, goes from ice, into a liquid phase, somehow the particles actually get closer to their neighbors, which is the reverse of what we might expect. 
Now, some of you guys observed that that is consistent with your real world observation, that when you put an ice cube into a glass of water, the ice cube floats. And we've seen before that the way that things float is they're less dense than what they're floating in. So we have some real world information that says, actually, yeah, I have seen that. Like ice does float on liquid water. So that must mean ice is less dense than liquid water. And that would be consistent with the first part of this graph. But it may be harder to try and account for that, like on a particle level, like why are they getting closer together as they get more energy and I would expect them to spread farther apart. So that was really all I was asking you to do in looking at this graph. You didn't have to have a full explanation of why the particles are acting so weird in water. I wanted you to be able to extract information from the graph. And really, when you're doing that, you're trying to figure out what is the story this graph is trying to tell me. And then you figure out, does that story make sense? And if it makes sense, great, but that's kind of a boring outcome. What's more interesting is when a graph surprises you and it's not the story you thought it would tell. And then you get to delve in and try to figure out like, what is the deal here? So that's where I want you guys to be at. Um, your next challenge question will probably be something similar. You're gonna have another graph to kind of try and uh, extract information from and convert the graph into a story in words and pictures. So the more practice you get with that, the better you're gonna get at it. But you guys have done incredibly impressive work so far and I'm super proud of you, so keep it up.